Welcome to St. Margaret de Ville Parish. We gather today to celebrate God's power and salvation. Jesus is the royal firstborn and the firstborn son of God, promised to David. He is the one Isaiah foretold, who brings good tidings of peace and salvation. Though restrictions have been lifted on places of worship, please observe all protocols. Social distance, mask and hand sanitize as you enter the church. We will also require contact information and a response to the usual COVID checklist at all public places. Today we sing a new song. It is a song of those who have believed in the Christ child and been born again and given power to become children of God. Please stand, our celebrant is Father Bernard. of the birth of Jesus Christ. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us humble ourselves before God and ask him for mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
have seen a great light, those who lived in a land of deep darkness. On them, light has shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all inequity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch 
over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, at Christmas we celebrate the mystery of God's love. And it is a mystery, because why else would the God who created the whole universe want to become a tiny little baby in a manger? And that is the mystery of Christmas, that God loves us so much that he is willing to humble himself and come among us in order to save us. We all have heard the account of the birth of Jesus every year at Christmas. And so we are familiar with all of the characters, Mary and Joseph, and the child Jesus in the manger, and the angels, and the shepherds. But today, for the purposes of this homily, I'd like to focus on the city in which Jesus was born. And as we heard in today's Gospel, that city is the city of Bethlehem. Now the word Bethlehem comes from two Hebrew words. Beth meaning house and lehem meaning bread. So Jesus was born in the house of bread. Now you might ask, what relevance does that have to Christmas? And the relevance is very important for us to understand because in John 6, so the Gospel of John, chapter 6, our Lord Jesus Christ speaks of himself in this way. He says, I am the bread of life. I am the bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. So is it a coincidence that Jesus, who calls himself the bread of life, was born in the house of bread? There are no coincidences with God. And that is why we need to understand the connection between him being born in Bethlehem, the house of bread, and him calling himself the bread of life. Now we know that we eat bread in many different forms and that bread sustains our physical lives. But the bread that Jesus says that he will give us is himself. He says, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And so Jesus makes that promise in John chapter 6, and he fulfills that promise at the Last Supper. On that first Holy Thursday, the night before he died on the cross, Jesus sat down with his apostles, took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take and eat. This is 
my body. So this is the mystery that we celebrate today, the mystery of God who loves us so much that not only did he come among us as a baby in the manger, not only did he die on the cross so that our sins may be forgiven and we may be restored to God's friendship, but then in Holy Communion, he says, come and receive me. Because without me living in you, you will not have eternal life. And that is the mystery that I spoke about at the beginning. That God loves us so much that he goes to such great lengths in order to prove his love for us. So that is what we do today. We rejoice, we celebrate, and we give thanks to God for his love for us that he sent his son to be our savior because he desires us to have everlasting life. And so my dear friends, today as we give thanks to God for his son, let us approach the altar at Holy Communion time with great reverence and awe because if Jesus, the son of God, the eternal second person of the Holy Trinity, can become a little baby in the manger, then we should never doubt that he is able to transform a tiny piece of bread into himself and nourish us with the bread that come down from heaven. So I thank the Lord today with you for his love and let us continue to live in this love of Jesus Christ because he came to us as a baby because he wants us to welcome him into our lives and into our hearts. And if we do so, then we are assured a place in the kingdom of heaven. Let us stand and profess our faith I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With Christ's light shining on us this night, let us pray to God for our own needs, the needs of the church and of the world. For the church, that the people of God will always be a light to the world for those who live in darkness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace on earth, that the peace which Christ offers will be a reality for all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that our celebration of the birth of our Savior will make us more aware of our unity in Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the lonely, the bereaved, the sick, and all those who are suffering in any way, that the light of Christ will shine on them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whom this Mass is offered, Manuel and Genoveva Barbosa, Virginia Sinajon, Mary Paul. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that they may share in the gift and promise of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. With Mary, we thank the Lord for sending his son to be our savior. Uniting our prayers with those of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, 
the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Please be seated. acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours. And begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and your entire people, as we walk in your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Christ has made us sons and daughters of God, and so we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Thank you, choir, for such beautiful music tonight. And I really want to thank all those who contributed towards making our Christmas event such a special occasion. Our choirs, our music ministry, and also those who decorate our church. They always do such an excellent job, and we do appreciate the work that you do. Um, I know people are returning to church gradually, and some of you might not have been here for a period of time, but I'm encouraging you to, you know, start coming back to church, real church that is, not virtual church. Um, we do make uh, quite an effort to ensure that we provide you with a safe environment. The church is sprayed and we do enforce the, um, the regulations and protocols that are expected and so far I think we've been doing quite a good job. So come out and celebrate with us as often as you can. Uh, pick up a, a bulletin on your way out that will give you information concerning the times of masses, especially over the next two weekends. Those of you who have not gotten your envelopes yet, they are available just in the left corner of the church as you are leaving in the left um, foyer of the church. And those of you who do not have envelopes, try to call the parish office at some point during the week. We are closed on Monday and Tuesday, but we reopen um, on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, want to thank all of you for your continued support to the parish. God bless you all, and may you truly enjoy a joyful and blessed Christmas season. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity, may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes. 